So we now know how to pass parameters to a kernel. We uh, we say we saw that we will use a 1D grid for a 2D problem. We uh, showed you how to use memory access, and we introduced mathematical functions. Now we will deal with memory management on the host side. Apaka kernels accept pointers to device memory. Uh, the challenge here is that host and device don't always share the same memory space. This means that memory buffers need to be allocated on both the host and the device in Apaka, and you need to be transferring memory from the host to the device and vice versa after the computation. However, in case of CPU devices, those actually share their memory space with the host, there's optimization potential in avoiding unnecessary copies, so be aware of the hardware you're using. Memory is allocated using the alpaca membuff alloc function. The, uh, the prerequisites look like this. The first is uh, a type that is not important just yet. We'll cover that tomorrow. Then we are defining our buffer type, which is uh, specific to the host. In this case, we're using a, a float buffer, and we pass in our dimensionality and index types. We also define a vector type. And uh, we actually need to acquire a host device for this part. So this device basically simulates uh, an actual physical device, but is specific to the host. We need to define the extent of our buffers, and then we can use uh, the membuff alloc function to actually allocate our buffer. This is the native alpaca way. However, if you already have pre-allocated memory, you can also use this with alpaca. The approach is shown down here. You, if you, for example, you just have a standard vector buffer, you can just wrap it into a, a alpaca view and uh, pass in the pointers data to this memory view. Allocating memory on the physical device works the same way. Again, you call uh, the membuff alloc function uh, from Alpaca. The only thing that's differing here from the host approach is that you're now uh, tying this memory buffer to a uh, physical device. Other than that, the syntax is the same. After you've initialized the host buffer using a for loop, for example, or something from algorithm or a simple memset, you can transfer your memory from the host to the device. In Alpaca, all memory operations are explicit. And uh, in order to copy memory from the host to the device, Alpaca comes with a memview copy function. The first parameter to a copy function is the queue. We will explain the queue concept tomorrow. Then uh, the second parameter is the target. So where do you want to copy to? The third parameter is the source. Where do you copy from? And the last parameter is the extent of the copy. So the number of elements you want to copy. In the lower section, this is uh, the same approach for a plain pointer that you already allocated before you used Alpaca. So this is specific, for example, for a standard vector in the lower section. In our compute pi example, this looks like uh, this. So we press up the point structs and then the kernel. And here we are first allocating memory on the host side. So we're allocating a buffer for the X indices, we're allocating a buffer for the Y indices, and we're uh, allocating a buffer for the um, inside Booleans, so uh, the buffer which determines if our points are inside the circle or not. We then get the raw pointers to these buffers with this uh, memview get pointer native uh, API call and pass these raw pointers to the point struct, which we will later pass into the kernel. We then just generate some random numbers in this lower section here to initialize the host buffers so uh, that the points are scattered randomly across the area. And the next step we're going to allocate, we're allocating memory on the device. 
nodes that it's pretty similar to what we're doing on the host. So we're just uh, allocating uh, buffers for the uh, X indices, for the Y indices, and for the inside booleans. Then we're creating a point struct that uh, will reside on the device. And then we're going to uh, we're going to copy from the host to the device. And we're only copying X and Y because uh, the inside part is going to be determined on this on the device, not on the host. And the actual kernel execution would follow here, but we will look at that in the next section. So this is basically all you need to know about memory management in Alpaca. Are there any questions for this part? Yes. Okay. So why do we need, uh, so why shouldn't we use malloc for host side allocations? I assume it's linked to either data transfer requirements or to attaching some metadata to the buffer pointer, but which it is. You mean uh, the host alloc? Yeah. So why do we need to wrap our host side buffers into this? What, what does this give us? I can, I can jump in if you like. Okay. Yeah, uh, so the reason is uh, it is uh, depending on, on the backend you use, for example, for CUDA or HIP, that your memory is, uh, for example, pinned uh, or, or the knowledge about the memory is also given to the API of CUDA and uh, it uh, requires also some alignments uh, of your memory to have, for example, asynchronous memory copies. Uh, CUDA, for example, is emulating something like asynchronous mem memory copies, but then is syn synchronizing uh, afterwards. And uh, at all, you will be uh, much slower if you not um, use the interfaces, for example, from CUDA to pin your memory and then uh, give the control over the memory to the, to the CUDA API or to the HIP API. And therefore, uh, you should use uh, best uh, the Alpaca methods to allocate your host buffers. Okay. Because Alpaca is then handle it uh, for you. Yeah, it's taking care of all these uh, special buffer requirements from the underlying API, basically. Yes. Okay. Any more questions? I, I have one question. Um, you're, you're passing in the the, the parameters as a, as a struct. Yes. Um, would it be possible also to, I mean, for the X, Y, for example, to, to just pass in a, a two-dimensional C arrays thing? Uh, I'm, I'm asking this because I, I did something similar in, in CUDA and I ended up uh, with creating a three-dimensional array. Um, and in CUDA, this, this is extremely tedious uh, with all the pitch you have to uh, do and, and all these kinds of things. So uh, the, the question actually is, would you support it in, within Alpaca and would this become a bit more easy to do? Alpaca has a multi-dimensional buffer, so you should use that. Okay. Uh, or do you want to jump in? Yeah. But yeah, I, I like to jump in. Yeah, cu currently uh, you need to, to handle the pitch uh, if you like to on the device to access the uh, n-dimensional buffer from uh, Alpaca, you need to um, handle the pitch by your own because uh, we have no, no iterator for that. But uh, we are working on that because this is also more than less a requirement for a uh, circle that we do not uh, pass plain pointer inside the, to the kernel so that we have some iterator or whatever objects uh, which give us access to the memory. And then we can also provide um, an easier interface to handle this uh, in Alpaca. But currently, uh, you need to do it by your own. You need to ask the, the, um, the device buffer for the, the pitches, and then uh, you need to calculate, calculate it by hand. OK, thank you. OK, any more questions regarding, to, uh, regarding the memory management? Okay, 